Did you know that honeybees have impressive communication abilities that includes them getting jiggy with it? Okay, so there may not be any background music except the buzzing of bees, but a honeybee returning from a foraging trip does have a specific sequence of events to notify other bees where the food is. This includes several dance moves and the unfortunate regurgitation. In the round dance, the bee is conveying that food is close by so they can fly around in circles until they find it. In the waggle dance, food is some distance away so they may need direction. Distance may be conveyed by the number of comb cells traveled. Buzzing, duration of waggle, and the orientation further pinpoint the food source. The vibration dance tells everyone to forage more. I'm Dr. DeBusk and in this video I'm going to discuss various insect societies. Entomologists limit sociality to a more restricted range of cooperative behaviors. Use sociality is defined by three traits. First, there is a division of labor with a caste system involving sterile or non-reproductive individuals assisting those that reproduce. Second, there's cooperation among colony members and tending the young. Third, there's an overlap of generations capable of contributing to the colony functioning. Eusociality occurs in all ants and termites and some bees and wasps. Solitary insects exhibit no social behaviors. With subsocial insects, adults care for their own nymphs and larvae. In quasi-social behavior, a communal nest consists of members of the same generation in which all assist in raising young and all the females are able to lay eggs. In a semi-social behavior, the communal nest is similar to quasi-social but there is a division of labor with, the with some females laying eggs, queens, but sisters rather than daughters act as workers. In primitively used social insects, the workers look the same as queens with little or no morphological differences between the casts. Some sweat bees are primitively eusocial. Bumblebees are also primitively eusocial, although the queen is slightly larger than her workers. Social behavior can include aggregations or parental care. Monarch butterflies practice non-reproductive aggregations as they overwinter in specific sites in Mexico and California. Many tropical butterflies form roosting aggregations, particularly in species that are distasteful with warning signals. This allows them to share the protective warning coloration and the education of local predators. These lubber grasshoppers are another example of aggregation for defense. For most insects, the highest mortality occurs in the egg and first instar, and many insects tend these stages until the more mature larvae or nymphs can better fend for themselves. The order of insects in which tending of eggs and young is most frequent are the Blattodia, Orthoptera and Dermaptera, Thysanoptera, Hemiptera, Coleoptera, and Hymenoptera. Giant water bugs exhibit paternal egg tending, an example of parental care without a nest. Nesting is a social behavior in which eggs are laid in a pre-existing or newly constructed structure where the parents bring food to the young. Earwigs overwinter in a nest and in spring, the male is ejected when the mother starts tending to the nest. She will forage and provide food for the young nymphs. This is an example of parental care with solitary nesting. Some insects use construction materials to create nests like the carpenter bee. Communal nesting may occur when conditions for nest construction are scarce and scattered throughout the environment. Digger wasps share a nest with others and females remain in the nest and guard. Certain aphids have a sacrificial sterile soldier cast consisting of some first or second instar nymphs that exhibit aggressive behavior and never develop into adults. Soldiers are scorpion-like or pseudoscorpion-like as a result of body sclerotinization and enlarged interior legs and will attack intruders. Some gall thrips produce a soldier morph and are considered as having primitive eusocial behavior since they often live communally, cooperate in brood care, and forage with their young. Sex determination is through haplodiploidy with galls founded by a single female establishing multiple generations. Eusocial hymenopterans have a division of labor in their colonies, involving a caste system comprising of a reproductive queen, non-reproductive workers, and a defensive soldier or drone group. There may be further subcasts that perform specific tasks. 
There is a haplodiploid genetic system in which queens control the sex of their offspring. The males develop from unfertilized eggs and are haploid, and females develop from fertilized eggs and are diploid. Now you see where the term haplodiploid comes from. In this system, there are behavioral and chemical maintenance of the monarchy. Many wasp species exhibit eusociality. All individuals are morphologically similar and live in colonies that seldom last for more than a year. The colony is dominated by one queen that establishes dominance physically by biting, chasing, and begging for food. The winning queen gains rights to egg laying and initiation of cell construction. Dominance may be incomplete with non-queens laying some eggs which the queen may make a meal of them or allow them to become small workers. If a queen dies, workers can undergo ovarian development to replace the queen. There's age polyethism where individuals perform different tasks at different times in, in its life. Newly emerged workers are involved in nest construction and food distribution. Middle aged workers are involved in foraging and old age workers are involved in guarding. Specifically designed nests are created using wood pulp as a building material with the brood aligned in combs. For European honeybees, as well as, as some other bees, female casts are dimorphic, differing in their appearance. The queen is larger than any worker with a larger abdomen. Male drones are also produced, living only to mate and produced from unfertilized eggs. Morphological adaptations of worker bees associated with pollen collection include plumous hairs, a pollen basket or a corbicula on their hind tibia, and combs and rakes to remove the pollen. They also have a barbed stinger that cannot be retracted after use. Workers build nests using wax produced in wax glands. Most bees provision their larvae with nectar and pollen rather than animal material. The cast differentiation is largely trophogenic, determined by the quantity and quality of the larval diet. Future queens are given royal jelly that is high in sugar and contains a protein called royal lactin. The worker exhibits polyethism, different jobs at different ages, and juvenile hormone is involved in these behavioral changes. The queen maintains control over the worker's reproduction through pheromones inhibiting ovarian development. Other pheromones provided by the bees are associated with alarm, orientation, colony recognition, and regulation. Africanized honeybees are a subspecies that have an increased tendency to swarm, migrate, escape, and be more aggressive. It can easily take over a European honeybee nest. Originally found in South Africa, this subspecies has spread through the warmer areas of the U.S. All ants are social and their species are polymorphic. There are two major female castes, the reproductive queen and the workers, with usually complete dimorphism between them. Many ants have monomorphic workers, but others have distinct subcasts called according to their size, minor, media, and major workers. The larger workers or older and monomorphic species usually have a defensive role. Workers are never winged, but queens have wings that are shed after mating, as do the males, which die after mating. Winged individuals are called allates. Cast determination is trophogenic. A high protein diet promotes differentiation of a queen, and a less rich, more dilute diet leads to differentiation of workers. Larvae are fed through trophallaxis, regurgitation of liquid food. There may be several queens in one nest in some ant species, although dominated by a single queen. The subterranean soil nests of Mimerca species and the mounds of plant debris of Formica species are typical temperate ant nests, creating a network of tunnels and chambers. All termites are eusocial. Unlike Hymenoptera, the casts of the hemimetabolous termites involve immature stages and equal representation of the sexes. Although both are nymphs, termitologists refer to nymphs as developmental instars of reproductives and larvae as instars of sterile lineages. Members of Termitidae differ from other termites by lacking symbiotic 
protozoa that secrete enzymes to break down the gut contents. Some use fungus to break down cellulose. They have an elaborate and rigid caste system. Termitted queens undergo extraordinary physogastry, which the abdomen is distended 500 to 1000% its original size. All colonies have a pair of primary reproductives, a queen and king that are long lived and mate repeatedly. Supplementary reproductives can potentially replace them. Soldiers have distinct heavily sclerotized heads with large mandibles or with a strongly produced snout through which sticky defensive secretions are ejected. Workers are unspecialized and light colored, giving rise to the name white ants. As with ants, termites produce pheromones through anal excretions and transfer them through trophallaxis. Subterranean termites nest in the ground and create mud tubes while drywood termites nest in wood. The homes of social insects provide many other insects with a hospitable place for their development. The term inguilin refers to an organism that shares the home of another. Predatory inguilins may negatively affect the host, whereas other inguilins may merely shelter within the nest or give benefits such as feeding on nest debris. Integration is achieved by mimicking the chemical cues used by hosts such as pheromones or by tactile signaling that releases social behavior responses or both. This is called Wasmanian mimicry. An example is the cuckoo beads that look and smell like host species. They enter the nest of a host and lay eggs in cells provisioned by host bees. The larvae hatch and eat the pollen ball and host larvae. In some species, they will completely take over the nest of the host. Varroa mites feed externally on honeybee brood, causing deformation and death of bees. Social insects are highly successful. Three qualities contribute to their competitive advantage. First, the tasks of foraging, feeding the queen, caring for offspring, and maintenance of the nest can be performed simultaneously by different groups rather than sequentially as in solitary insects. Performing tasks at the same time means that one activity does not jeopardize another and the nest is not vulnerable to predators and parasites while foraging. Also, individual errors have little or non-consequences in parallel operations compared to one after another. Second, Social insects can rally all troops to defend against a larger or more numerous predator and construct a nest compared to a solitary insect. Thirdly, the specialization of function allows some homeostatic regulation, such as holding food reserves, temperature regulation, and distribution of resources, depending on the demands of the season and colony age. Many social insects are urban pests. They are well adapted to city life. These pests vary with location with structural damaging termites and invasive ants most common in warm, temperate, and tropical regions, whereas yellow jackets can plague temperate areas. Subsocial insects such as cockroaches and bed bugs also share our environment. About 80 species of termites are serious pests of wooden structures. The most damaging are subterranean termites. The best termite control is attained by isolating lumber from soil contact by a concrete slab and applying a barrier of long-lasting insecticide or repellent underneath. Treatment for breaches includes removing infested wood and either a soil treatment or a bait and monitoring program. There are 40 species of pest ants. The most common are tramp ants, including the Argentine ant and the Faroa ant. In the southern U.S., fire ants have large colonies high densities, and aggressive stinging behavior. Another issue with nuisance ants is their tendency to farm sap-sucking hemipterans. The best ant control is from baits laced with slow-acting insecticides that are returned to the nest. Social wasps, such as paper wasps, can result in stings. So destruction of nests with care is the best control solution. In conclusion, social insects have a distinct caste system, cooperative brood care, and overlapping generations, making them some of the most successful insects out there.